Welcome back to Java for Beginners. The main topic for this lesson is going to be loops. I hope uh, you have reviewed my earlier tutorials 1 through 5. This is just a follow on to those tutorials. So the objectives of this lesson are going to be mostly the for loop and the while loops. The for statement provides a compact way to iterate over a range of values. It is often referred to as the for loop because of the way in which it repeatedly loops until a particular condition is satisfied. I will again start with an example. So here is a simple for loop. This is where the for loop begins and this is where it ends. In this case there happens to be only one statement inside the for loop there could be more. The for loop has three parts. Initializer. This is where you set the starting value for the counter variable i in this case which starts at 1. The second part is the condition or the termination condition. In this case you are saying that this loop should run as long as i is less than 10. This loop should be repeated as long as i is less than 10. And then once you go through the loop you come back to the either the increment or the decrement section. In this case you are saying i plus plus so the value of i would be incremented at the end of every iteration. So what's going to be the output of this program? If I run this program every time it goes through this loop the system dot out dot print line is going to be encountered which is going to be printing the value of i as it is going through the loop and the starting value of i that is printed is 1. That makes sense because you start with i equals 1, you check for the condition, you go through the loop, then you come back to the increment section and increment the value of i by 1. Go back and check the condition. Is it still less than 10? If that's the case you keep on going. So the last value of i that is going to be printed is 9, not 10. So when i is 9, it goes back here, it's incremented by 1, which then becomes 10. It checks for the condition, is i less than 10? No, so the loop is going to be terminated. Here is a nested loop, a loop within a loop. Here we have an inner loop which says, j equals 1, keep on going as long as j is less than or equals i, i is going to be defined by the previous loop and then you're going to increment the value of j by 1 and then what you're printing within this loop is the value of the outer counter variable and here is the outer loop which goes from 1 through 5. To understand this nested for loop I have set up Eclipse. Eclipse is a Java IDE integrated development environment where you can write your program, test it, debug it and compile it. You can do everything from within the IDE. That's why it is called the integrated development environment. It is not very easy to use but you know if you like uh, what I'm going to be showing you you may want to set it up and try uh, building your Java applications using Eclipse. Eclipse is a pretty popular tool for developing Java applications. So here is the for loop running in Eclipse. So within Eclipse I can actually run the code one line at a time and watch what is going on. So in this case I step to step to this line and on the right hand side window it is saying that the value of the variable i equals 1. It has already gone through the outer loop and i is 1. If I step down further it says it has just entered the inner loop where it says i equals 1 and within the inner loop j equals 1. Continue on it goes back to the next iteration of j and since j is going to immediately end it is out of that. It's going to just print an empty line, go back to the iteration of the outer loop. 
now the value of i becomes 2 we enter the inner loop again so in this case j is going to go from 1 to 2 right now j is 1 if I continue on j becomes 2 and if you watch the window at the bottom it is going to be printing out those values this is where the value of j the output is being printed let's step through the code now the value of i is 3 the outer counter variable is 3 and the inner loop is going to go from 1 to 3 1 to the current value of i so I'm going to quickly step through the program so you can see what is going on so this is a good way to debug your program in case uh, if you know uh, if you don't understand what's going on you can step through the program watch the variables watch the values of the variables in the right hand panel so this is a great tool for debugging and understanding your Java applications the while loop the while loop is just like the for loop except that it has no explicit counter following this example this is what the while loop looks like it starts with the while keyword and the expression is a boolean expression which only has the termination condition as long as that expression evaluates to true the while loop would continue this is where the while loop begins this is where the while loop ends so it will iterate between these statements as long as that condition is true what happens is we have the initial value of count set to 1 so you enter the while loop and since count is less than or equals 10 the condition is true you're going to enter the while loop the count is going to be incremented by 1 so count now becomes 2 and you're going to print the value of count that's where that's why the first value that is printed in this program is 2 you continue on go back to the loop continue the loop and uh, finally the last value of count that is going to be printed is going to be 11 so why is the last value that is printed is 11 and not 10 let's analyze this loop so when the value of count is 10 you print count you go back to the loop it says is count less than or equals 10 10 is less than or equals 10 so you continue on the count becomes 11 you print the count now when you go back to the top of the loop and check to see if the count was less than or equals 10 it is not so the last value of the count that's going to be printed is 11 and not 10 here is another version of the while loop which is called the do while loop the only difference between the while loop and the do while loop is that you start with the do statement and the while goes at the bottom of the loop what it means is that you always enter the loop at least once you only check for the condition at the bottom of the loop other than that for this particular example you get very similar results I want to introduce another statement the break statement the break statement can be used to break out of a do loop or a while loop or a for loop when you run this example it is going to ask you to enter a number you can enter as many numbers as you want if you enter a negative number it will stop automatically it will give you the sum of all the numbers that you have entered so how does that work so here is the do loop you enter a number it is going to check every number that you enter if the number that you enter entered is less than 0 is negative it's going to break out of that loop breaking out of the loop is equivalent to terminating that loop and moving on to the next statement so this loop would keep on going as long as you enter a positive value so in this example as shown here I entered three numbers 3.5 4.7 8.9 and when I entered minus 1 it terminated the loop it gave me the sum of the numbers I had entered before entering minus 1 okay so we are done with the loops in the next few topics I will be covering arrays Java classes and applets thank you